Someone tell us that there was no lunar atmosphere? Isn't that correct? Or was I not paying attention that day? Next slide. In this, in this paragraph, they say the introduction to the initiating group is that this is a lunar-based planning group. And then it's going to be attended by the RAND Corporation, by people from UCLA, by North American Aviation. Next slide, please. You can see that this colloquium took place between May 13, 1958 and April 25, 1959. Next slide. Next. Here's another contents of a separate section of the same document. The chemistry of the moon, chemical resources on the moon, power for a lunar colony, where to land on the moon, observations on Mars and Venus. It doesn't say observations of Mars and Venus. Gamma ray spectroscopy of the moon's surface, program of lunar and planetary experiments, and the crater Linné, which is very important, ladies and gentlemen, because the crater Linné has completely disappeared from the surface of the moon. You cannot find it. It's as if bulldozers have covered it up. Next slide. But in 1958, in this document, there may have been someone on the moon at that time. Next slide. Are orbiting the moon who took these photos of the crater Linné. What's so interesting in the crater Linné? Why did they have that in their colloquium? Well, there's a couple of things. One is this right here. Look at the crater. See the crater? See where the shadow is? And see where the sun is? There's another crater. See where the shadow is and where the sun is? That means this is not a crater. This is something sticking straight up from the surface or coming out of the surface of the moon. The caption in the photograph said that this is gas escaping from the interior of the moon. But there's even something even more interesting, and that is, in this crater, there is a dome. And in this crater, there is also a dome. These are both the same photograph taken with different filters. Next slide. Now, supposedly, we had nothing up there in 1958 and 59 orbiting the moon, or, and there was nothing on Earth that could take a photograph like that from the Earth. This is the Tonopah area of Nevada. Tonopah test range is out in this area. Next. Down here you can see Nellis Air Force Base. See again up here, Tonopah test range. Down in here is Mercury. Over here is Groom Lake. Next slide. This is the Tonopah test uh, range with uh, some revelations on it. Stealth fighter flight path. Turn off to TTR, rocket on stand, radar road, large radar facilities, unmarked runway used by stealth fighters is here. We could go on and on, but we don't have the time. Next. This area is also the test range. Nellis Air. Over here it says Force Space. <laughs> Gold Flat. You see over here is Tonopah. Right up here it says Saucer Mesa. See that? Saucer Mesa. I don't know if that means anything, but I think that's a hell of a coincidence in an area where they're testing flying saucers that you've got a name on a map called Saucer Mesa. Next. This is a letter from a man who worked in, and this is in my book, so I'm just going to brush over it lightly, who worked in Area 51 and saw the saucer fly. Next. Uh, that's just a lens cap for my camera. We cover up names to protect the identity of people so that they don't get hurt. But in here, he talks about seeing crates labeled Project Red Light. Project Red Light is the name of the project that I saw that flew the crashed alien discs and the technology that we had for flying saucers. He also talks about the fact that uh, when a certain siren would go off, they were supposed to run into a building and they couldn't look out the windows. 
or if they were caught outside, they all wore a little pouch on their belt that contained a black hood. They were to take the black hood out of the pouch, put it over their head, and lie down on their stomach on the ground and not move. Next. And he goes through, he talks about, he says he saw the pilots, they were human, and they were just slightly larger than he was. Next. And next. This is a photograph of one of the craft flying above Area 51 in Nevada. Next. This is a photograph of some craft. I forgot where this was taken. It was not in Nevada. But this symbol, some people say that this symbol belongs to a group of aliens called the Umo group. Now, I did a lot of research to find out if there's anything in this earth named Umo. I found an Umo Corporation in London, England, that was a KGB front company. Just like the CIA has front companies, one of them is Gray Advertising in New York City. It belongs to the Central Intelligence Agency. They are the ones who pay the expense checks for UFO Cover Up Live. Next. This is a saucer developed and flown by the French. It is real. It flies. It's not a joke. Next. This is another view of the same saucer. You can see the hatch down here. This is significant. That is a watertight, airtight hatch. What kind of technology is that? Boy, you got me. It says here, it says three 135 horsepower engines would supply the power. It doesn't say that it did, and it doesn't say what kind of engines. Next. Now, if you remember, not too long ago, Jackie Gleason's wife, after he died, released an unpublished manuscript, and in it, she says that Jackie Gleason told her that he was asked to accompany President uh, Nixon to Homestead Air Force Base, where President Nixon showed him dead alien bodies in a morgue. Jackie Gleason was very much interested in UFOs and all of that kind of stuff, and he was a friend of President Nixon. Nobody knows if the story is true, but I don't think his wife has any reason to lie to us. Why would she want to discredit her dead husband with something ridiculous that wasn't true? Next. And that was the cover of this magazine, June 14, 1955. Next which this story appeared. This was information leaked by a general. And he gave them a scoop. These are actual drawings of a United States Air Force flying saucer. Tells how it worked. Shows the air base of the future. And what is it? I'll be damned if it isn't an underground base. Where they can go in and out this way, out cliffs like they do under the Archuleta Mesa near Dulce, New Mexico, or up out the top. What a coincidence. Next. Next. Has it evolved into this? Here we are again at the Nevada test range. Next slide. Now, this is Broom Dry Lake right here. Notice it says danger. Right up here is where the 29 and a half mile marker is. Right up here somewhere is the little alien. Down here is Las Vegas. This highway goes up out of Las Vegas through Alamo to Ash Springs. Then you take this highway down here to the 29 and a half mile marker. And you look directly at Groom Lake on any given night from dusk till dawn. And you will see them fly. You can take photographs of them. You can videotape them. Thousands of people have done it. It had, they have called into radio shows and said what they saw. When Billy Goodman was on KBEG in Las Vegas, every night 